All right, this is really different. We already know who's on this. The leak really spoiled this. They should have just kept this a bit hidden for a bit longer. Try new traditions for a new year. I have never worn anything quite like this before. How do I look? Okay. She's using a chicken. Kubara, yeah. Reposition tax speed ball and tax speed link. I mean, we already knew all this because it, it showed us earlier. Resolute Prince. Peace is a wonderful thing, but without strength, peace cannot be sustained. Okay. That was really dorky. New skill, Hone Attack 4. We already knew that. That's It's already like really game breaking. Kumade Warrior. This weapon is strange. Levitain is better. Levitain does not sound like what she looks like at all. Okay, uh, and in year's first ring. That it is a New Year's tradition to visit a shrine. So wonderful. Did her voice actor change? She sounds so good. And Hakami looks so good. And Joint Hone Speed is a new skill here. I can do more than magic. Yes, you can. Yes, it's strange. Here we go. If your Obi comes. Oh, it's all about fixing their Obi. <laughs> and then, yeah, over here you see Legyar in the background. Honestly, people talked about this earlier, but I think I think they're right. If you did Creed as the free hero, think about it. Wouldn't it make so much sense? He's the only guy here. He is not a princess. And he's not exactly amazing. Except for the fact that he has, you know, Hone Attack 4. If he was a free hero, it would have made perfect sense. But, you know, Hone Attack 4 basically means they can't do that. Last year, it was New Year Corrin. And that was because... And he was nothing special. And the way they put him up at, all, at the end of all that was really strange as well. Anyways, I'm just saying, like, another guy for a free hero would have made perfect sense. But it's Leg Yarn it's, that's the free hero. But if they did that, the banner would be two princesses of Muspel and two princesses of Niffel, and it would have just rolled a bit better. Well, that's just what I think, anyways. Uh, we'll keep going, we'll go back and double check everything. But yeah, it's all this stuff was leaked in data mine. It is for one month January 1st to uh, February 1st. One month. That's plenty of time. So yeah, the suggestion as always is to prioritize the Winter Banner, prioritize the Legendary Heroes Banner, especially this Legendary Heroes Banner because Azura is so good. And then go back to this if you really want it. Uh, geez, this entire banner was set up to be fodder, I would say, because they have Joint Hone Speed and Hone Attack 4. And the fact that the heroes' weapons right now are all debuff weapons. Most heroes have like multiple multiple skills that you can um, fodder off from one hero alone just by well relatively easily so we'll go over that in a moment but yeah i i understand what they're doing they're setting it up so that even though the heroes aren't really fan favorites i mean these are heroes heroes so they're not exactly heroes that people like went out of their way uh, playing growing up with but still they set it up in a way that it's hard to like fault the banner Okay, so, Kubara, yeah. I started turn, inflicts speed minus 7 on foe on enemy team with the high speed through its next action. It's just chill speed. Um, but Fjorn's 35 attack, 35 speed, base stats. Basically indicates you should be using another bow. Kubara, Kubara, yeah. Like, these bows that debuff and these weapons that debuff, they're not that great because they're not exactly great weapons. Usually this goes to more of a support hero. So, like... I would say Leviton is the one that makes the most sense because she's healing. She doesn't need to attack. But then she has a really high attack stat for some reason, so. But I'm just saying, like, if, if you're use, really going to use this bow, it's not that great. There's, like, a lot of, of better bows. If you don't want to use a slain bow, there's a desperation bow from Summer uh, off of Fallen, uh, sorry, off of Summer Takumi. There is brave bows, which would fit her stat line better at 35 attack, 35 speed. There are fire sweep bows. But you wouldn't really use this if you really want Fjorm to be an attacker. And if you really just wanted Green Archer, I would say Legendary Lin is better. Because she has a more offensive bow and a more offensive A skill. Actually, it's comparable. Taxi Bond versus Laws of Sasei. Anyways, 
She comes with reposition, attack speed bond, attack speed link, even res wave. So this is really fodder heavy. Attack speed bond is great. Attack speed link is great. But attack speed link is better on a hero like uh, Legendary Lucina. Because she can use future vision and trigger it and then move afterwards. Uh, attack speed link and attack speed bond would work together really well. But she's not really the best hero to put it all together with. This is really heavy on the speed portion. So she sh she's expected to double. The problem is, defensively, she's not that great. So without Desperation... Yeah, without Desperation, she doesn't really pull it, pull it off. She, w If they can counterattack anyways, she would be in trouble. If they can counterattack. She shouldn't be able to survive two, two fights. And because she is a green archer, a lot of enemy heroes are red. And a lot of enemy heroes are green. So she either has disadvantage or neutral. Whereas, if she was neutral all around, she would be better in most situations, like versus um, red infantry and red flyers too. It's funny because green, green. Um, if you're a green archer and you're fighting against a red flyer, it's not a guaranteed win. If you don't double especially, it's not guaranteed. Actually, you could die if they can discount you. Anyways, it's really interesting, but yeah. Fjorm, that's Fjorm. I'll show you Legendary Lin later if you want. And I can really easily prove how much better she is. People joke at Legendary Lin, but like, <laughs> have you used her? Alright, uh, Creed is really weird because he's low speed flying. He is basically the equivalent to a Baruka or a Tana. Basically. But I think Tana is better because her weapon increases her defense and res by a lot more. And it's a Legendary weapon, so it has more might. And I think Baruka is better because she's easily mergeable, has a higher defensive stat, and very accessible. And she comes with Slaying Axe, so it's really easy to make a build for her. And, but yeah, in this case, he has Chill Attack in his weapon, which is really interesting. But because his base defense is only 36, even with Attack Defense Bond, it only reaches 41. You would really have to give him a lot of support to make him really, really good. Whereas with say Baruka or somebody you have and with merges in mind especially it's really easy to take him to the mid 40s and high 40s of defense and then you can just nuke people with like Ignis with um QR or Slaying Axe so I would argue they're probably better choices and yeah so the best thing about him is just Hone Attack 4 it okay and this is what I was talking about earlier, like Creed and the rest of the heroes being really easy to uh, fodder weapons off of, uh, fodder anything off of anyways. Because you could just learn Gation 1 and 2, learn Hone Attack 3 from Olivia, for example, or Matilda as 4 stars, and then you just learn Gation uh, 1 and 2, you learn a Sword, and you learn Hone Attack 4, really easy. Or you could learn uh, QR 1 and 2 from Tsubaki, and then you do learn QR3 and Hone Attack 4 and, I don't know, you attack defense bond 1 or swap 1 or whatever. It's it's really easy to like fodder skills off of these guys. So in terms of being a fodder banner, this is really high value. But the heroes themselves, I don't think are that amazing. But yeah, Harid is basically equivalent to Baruka and Tana, but he's red and 5 star locked. Tana's 5 star locked too, but she has a better weapon in my opinion. If you get everything trigger, attack minus 7, uh, attack defense bond, and heck, throwing Hone Flyers, sorry, Fortify Flyers, then yeah, he, he does a really good job as being uh, a red wall, a red defensive hero, but that's a lot of ifs. And generally, I would say your red slot should go to like a Pala, because it's really easy, if you're making a Flyer Emblem team, because it's really easy for her to double thanks to her weapon. Uh, it goes to Sheeta if you want if you want to fight Armor or Cavs, because um, Wing Sword is so good. Or Alincia, if you have a 5-star hero and that she automatically doubles. Like, the red slot, red physical sword hero slot, it's mostly really aggressive, really offensive heroes. Creed is different, so he has a... He has... He's going to matter for some people if you really want that red hero, that red flying defensive hero. But for most people, I would just suggest going for the really good offensive heroes. Because they're easy to get, and they do so well, especially in a Fire Emblem team. Red Flyers are scarce, surprisingly, I agree. It, it is kind of strange.
I was kind of convinced Creed was going to be like offensive, like really offensive, like his legend version, but they really never made any use of his um, low speed. All right, and Leviton, uh, Leviton's so weird. She has really high attack for a healer, 36 attack, 30 speed, but the 30 speed really dampens whatever effect she was going to have. And Kuma Day Plus is one of the strangest chill options I see. Like it's, it's really good to have, but if you're going up against the Armor Emblem team, for example, whatever you're fighting already has very high defense and very low speed. There is a chance it could be like a fast dragon, like, you know, Summer or Legendary Tiki, for example, or who else? Or it could be like a Drog or something with relatively high speed, but generally, or Amelia, but relatively, uh, but generally they have low speed. And so if you chill the speed, it doesn't really help you very much. The most useful thing would therefore be um, dropping the attack. So in a way, you should just really be looking at it as attack minus five. He gives it, and you don't always only fight armor heroes, but most people have an armor hero and, and that would just draw Kumide's effect away. At the very least, attack minus five is helpful, but I'm just saying like it's a strange um, combination. If it did inflicts attack and defense minus five on foe, I would say it's a lot more useful. But yeah, this is kind of strange in my opinion. And there's not a lot of heroes in the game outside Gunthra that, you know, does bonus damage thanks to uh, debuffs. Like, direct bonus damage thanks to debuffs. Uh, Legendary Gunthra just does that, so. Anyways, Rehab Plus, uh, that's great to have. You can get that off Rise at 5 stars or something. Um, because she has higher attack, I guess she heals like 3 points more, 2 points more than the typical healer, but it's not a big deal, I'd say. Before we get a seasonal banner full of speedy armors, I think it's going to happen. Fast armor is going to be where the game goes next. Um, we've already seen the indications of it with like fast armor heroes like Niles, for example. Um, and Legendary and Tiki. Uh, they're not absurdly fast, but the game will head to that direction eventually. Because the B-slot skills already make speed irrelevant. But then if they want to make things different and go to a place that hasn't really been done before, it's speed armor. So... Anyways, Earth Fire Bomb, that's great. Attack Defense plus 6, really easy to trigger. Uh, Raffle Staff, that's good too. But that's like more of a fodder skill, in my opinion. Uh, even Defense Wave 3, yeah, it's great. So yeah, most heroes would learn Raffle Staff or Dazzling Staff, and they would just switch their A weapon to match it so that they have both Dazzling and Raffle anyway. So again, I think she's just another... Um, option for that another option for fodder if you really wanted to fodder her it would be easy to learn kuma day plus and rehab plus or earth fire bomb plus because you could just learn rehab plus uh rehab from rise four star rise and then learn kuma day plus and rehab plus kuma day kuma day plus and rehab plus same thing with earth, uh, earth fire bomb so again I, I really think this banner is really good for um foddering fodder but in terms of heroes not that great Better get my plus P Winter Tharja. Don't even show me. I've seen plus P Winter Tharjas. You guys just hurt me with that. And the final hero here. It's Gunthra. And in my opinion, this is the best looking hero here. She's actually really, really good. But she's really, really simple. Hikami is what makes her really good. And I think if you wanted to pull for a hero in this banner, it has to be Gunthra. How many of you guys are going to pull in this banner? And how many of you guys... And if you are pulling, do you care for Gunthra? Or which heroes do you care for? Because for me, I think it's Gunthra is the best offensive hero on this banner. Hikami speed plus 3 basically gives her 40 speed base. And that debuff aspect to it is amazing. It says inflicts attack speed, defense res minus 4 on nearest foes within 4 spaces during their next actions. So it's more than one enemy hero. At least that's what it says. And 4 spaces is huge. 4 spaces is not a straight line. Within four spaces is like a circle around your, around her. So Gunthra can debuff the entire team while being out of range. Potentially. Well, not entire team, but like one hero out of range or entire team within range. She's really good. Don't get my uh, don't get my wife with Gunthra. I'm quitting this game. Well, good luck. You're going to get a lot of creeds, I would say. Anyways, Hikami's the best thing about her. It's a legendary weapon, so you can't transfer off of her. She comes with Swiss Barrel 3. Uh, Swiss Barrel 2, sorry. And Desperation 3. 
that already makes her uh, unbuildable. You wouldn't want to switch off a Swiss Barrow or Desperation. I've seen so many people try to be so extra and so special. Like, they replace... When a hero comes with Fury, they replace it with Swiss, Swiss Barrow. And when a hero comes with Swiss Barrow, they replace it with Fury. Like, it just... Okay, sure. Honestly, just keep Swiss Barrow, keep Desperation. She's already really fine. One of the best offensive um, red flyers in the game, definitely. Um, the, realistically, in most situations, I would prefer Sheeta or Pala. Just because Pala doubles really easily in the Fire Emblem team, she does anti-armor, anti-caps, um, and they're 3-4 stars, so they're easier to get. But Gunthra is just pure damage, and that deep buff aspect is so useful, especially for things like Aether Raids, um, obviously Arena Assault, things like that. She would be a really good key member to a Fire Emblem team. The biggest thing here is Joint Hone Speed. And for those who don't know, Joint Hone Speed is... It's not a leveled leveled skill, as in... It's not Joint Hone Speed 1, 2, and 3. It's just Joint Hone Speed. You learn this off of learning Hone Speed 4. So, in other words, if you really want to fodder for Gunthra, you can learn um, Joint Hone Speed, Swiss Barrow 1 and 2. All you would have to do ahead of time is learn, like, um, Darting Blow 1 from Florina, and uh, Hone Speed from... Uh, Corrin, for example, female Corrin, and then you can just tr take the Swiss Barrow and join Hunt Speed. So that's it's really easy to fodder off of these heroes. Let me. It's just based on availability. Yeah. Katarina comes with Swiss Barrow, and Fury is way better on her. Katarina is different because of you know how her tone works, but yeah, I un I understand. But in most cases, I'd say it's not worth it. In most cases, I say it's not worth it. It's just simple. Like it's. How much of a difference are you making, really? You know? There's a benefit to using Swiss Barrow over Fury, and there's a benefit to using Fury over Swiss Barrow. So it's not like a clear upgrade. I would say in most cases, if you have Swiss Barrow or you have Fury on the hero already, you, you don't switch to the other one. It's usually not worth it. Usually. There's obviously cases where it makes a lot of sense, but usually it doesn't. Usually it's not worth the cost, is what I would say. It's really cool in her art how she's blessing her sword to have the ice effect. But yeah, that is the new banner. What do you guys think? If you guys think of anything at all.